We've talked at length about the mayoral race in Buffalo, New York, between India Walton and Byron Brown. She won. She defeated him, an incumbent Democratic mayor, and um, he is not only refusing to concede, but after being beaten in a Democratic Party primary, he's running a sore loser right in campaign. Imagine if a progressive did this. Imagine. It would never be tolerated. They'd be uh, uh, lambasted for spreading uh, disunity in the party. But yet when a corporate Democrat does it, then it's perfectly acceptable. And what's frustrating is that you have members of the Democratic Party establishment. They're not saying anything about this. They're just remaining silent. They aren't endorsing India Walton when she very clearly emerged victorious from the Democratic Party primary. They're kind of just letting Byron Brown run this sore loser Redden campaign and they hope that he wins. And that's gross. Even Chuck Schumer, who is pretending to be a progressive because he doesn't want a 2022 primary challenger, he is refusing to explicitly endorse the winner of a Democratic Party primary. Take a look. Senator, why haven't you endorsed anyone in the Buffalo mayoral primary or mayoral race yet? Your colleagues, Senator Bernie Sanders, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez have all endorsed India Walton, who won the Democratic primary. And do you believe that whoever wins the Democratic primary is a Democratic nominee? Uh, today's a day to talk about what's going on in Washington. It's not a day for politics. Have you decided then when you're going It's not a day for politics. I'm talking about what's going on in Washington. So Other any questions? On any on that subject? Primary. Yes. Others? Next subject. Yeah, so this is the kind of unity that you can expect when a progressive beats a corporate Democrat. No unity whatsoever. But make sure you always fall in line if the corporate Democrat, if the conservative Democrat beats a left-wing Democrat. Now, um, what's really despicable is the kind of attacks that India Walton has been subjected to. So a Democrat, a prominent Democrat in her state, has come out and said something that is laughable, but um, this this is really not, it's not that surprising given the state of the race in Buffalo. So John Keeley of Common Dreams explains, the chair of the New York State Democratic Party sparked anger, rebuke, and calls for his resignation Monday after comparing India Walton, winner of the party's nomination for Buffalo mayor and a black woman, to notorious racist and white supremacist David Duke. Party chair Jay Jacobs made the remarks during an interview with Spectrum News in which he was asked to explain why he and other top Democrats in the state have refused to endorse or support Walton's candidacy in the general election after she won a surprise victory over longtime incumbent Mayor Byron Brown in the primary earlier this year. Let's take a scenario very different where David Duke, you remember him, the Grand Wizard of the KKK, he moves to New York, he becomes a Democrat, he runs for mayor in the city of Rochester, which is a low primary turnout, and he wins the Democratic line, Jacob said. I have to endorse David Duke? I don't think so. While Jacobs acknowledged that Walton and Duke were not in the same category and later apologized for the comparison, the reaction from more progressive Democrats in New York was swift. And we'll talk about that reaction, but let's just take a moment and let these comments sink in. This is the chair of the New York State Democratic Party comparing a left-wing candidate to David Duke. Well, you know, if someone that horrible won then, uh, you know, we wouldn't seem unreasonable for refusing to endorse him, except she's nothing like David Duke. She cares about her constituents. She won because she ran a better campaign, and Byron Brown thought that he was entitled to win again and didn't even run a campaign. So constituents chose to go with the person who actually seemed to care. And yet you're saying, oh, well, that's... That's, you know, basically, you wouldn't expect me to endorse David Duke. I mean, what a clown. Now, some reactions here. Jamal Bowman writes via Twitter, It's insane to equate India Walton, a black woman, with David Duke, someone who supports the legacy of lynching black people and the rape of black women. This is the malignant narcissism of far too many white men. Jay Jacobs needs to resign or be removed. AOC chimed in saying, Jay Jacobs absolutely should resign over his disgusting comments comparing a black single mother who won a historic election to David Duke. India Walton is the Democratic nominee for mayor of Buffalo. No amount of racist misogyny from the old boys club is 
is going to change that. As a federally elected official in the New York Democratic Party, I have zero confidence in Jay Jacobs' ability to lead an NY Dem party that is inclusive and respectful of all. This is just his latest incident. Jacobs is a toxic presence in the party and his continued post as chair is shameful. To have a strong Democratic Party, we must have state parties that are truly democratic and operate with integrity. It's not just his pattern of attacks. Jacobs as chair is undermining the Democratic Party practice of uniting behind the nominee to protect his predecessor. 100% disqualifying. The New York Working Families Party said, while Jay Jacobs was attacking India Walton, India was on the picket line at Mercy Hospital standing with CWA District 1 nurses and hospital workers. That's the kind of person India is. So I'm glad that so many Democrats from New York are coming out to denounce it, and they're also specifically calling for his resignation. Because this is the chair of the state Democratic Party. He should be the one that is uniting all factions of the party or trying to do that, as difficult as that may be. But he has a vested interest in making sure that Democrats get elected. But here he is basically endorsing a write-in candidate over the rightful winner of a Democratic Party primary. I mean, it's just we hear all the time that the Democratic Party is a big tent party. But it's very clear that that tent excludes leftists and Democratic socialists like India Walton. But it definitely includes Republicans like Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema. It's just it's really, really infuriating. It's infuriating. So absolutely, he should resign and face pressure to resign until he does. Now, India Walton addressed this comments in a fundraising email saying, I should not have to defend why I am not in any way comparable to David Duke, a militant white supremacist and anti-Semite, a man who would celebrate my death. It is mind boggling that any Democratic Party leader would see fit to make such an offensive analogy. Jacobs and many corporate Democrats like him are still refusing to endorse our campaign. Despite our primary victory among Democratic voters, they're allegedly a Accountable to. It is clearer than ever that they'd rather uphold the status quo than fight for a bold, progressive vision that works for all Buffalonians. Yeah, and she's exactly right. So, uh, I mean, there's not really much left to say about this. I'm sure that this won't be the last attack on India Walton, and the actual election is coming up very soon, so please feel free to support India Walton if you can spare a couple of bucks, or if you can, canvas for her, because... Her victory is not a foregone conclusion because even though this is a write-in campaign in a heavily Democratic Party-leaning district, Byron Brown is the four-term incumbent mayor with a lot of name recognition and a lot of money, so he could still potentially win. But if she does win, I'm sure that the attacks will continue. I'm sure that the Democratic Party in Buffalo City Council will be obstructionist. Either way, they're going to fight her tooth and nail, but this is what we expect from a Democratic Party where leftists just aren't welcome. So that's why we have to get in there, kick them all out, kick them to the curb, take over, and uh, just do what the people need. And that's deliver. Actually fight for housing and justice. And stop letting these corporate Democrats dictate the Democratic Party's politics. This is supposed to be the working uh, class party. So it's time that... It becomes the working class party again and not this party of wealthy donors. It's just it's insufferable. But again, I'm not surprised at all. I have followed the corruption of the Democratic Party establishment for years now. And this is exactly what you'd expect anytime you see an insurgent leftist candidate defeat an incumbent corporate Democrat. Beta male.